I want to give you an intro on how to use the Canvas and Connect websites for Finance 215. And right now I'm in the student view and it doesn't look, I don't think, exactly like your view does, but um, I want it to be in the student view rather than the instructor view so you have a better idea of what the website looked like. So I've only activated a few of the menu items on the left but I've only activated the ones that you need. When I have announcements to post, they'll obviously appear in the announcements section. At the moment there's only one and make sure you read that and follow through on the things it talks about. But the bulk of the Canvas website is related to these modules. I've broken each week into a separate module with the uh, chapter, homework, and learn smarts listed there along with helpful items like you need interest factor tables for the time value of money which is chapter one. So I've got those here and anything that's an actual assignment has a due date next to it so you can see that even though there are a lot of things on the week one or week two module there aren't due dates by most of them because most of them aren't assignments, they're just, in this case, links to PDFs that you, you'll use for calculations. So there are only three things that are due in week two. The first one is actually an extra credit and it's optional, but most people do it for a, a few extra points. There's one homework due on October the 9th and then the, uh, well actually the homework is here, and then the Learn Smart is also due on October the 9th. Make sure you read through the syllabus and other information to learn about these things, but I'll, I'll talk about them too in a minute. I'm going to go to connect and show you how to access those. So even though it looks like there's tons of stuff that you have to do, a lot of them are just links to various things. So like there, here's an, a current article that relates to chapter two, and there's no due date associated with it because you don't have to turn anything in. I just want you to read it. Here are some slides that cover the material in Chapter 2. Again, there's no due date because I just want you to watch them. So there are two things that are due for Chapter 2, two things that are due for Chapter 3 during Week 3. Um, to access the homework and the Learn Smarts, you need to go to Modules and, and click here on MH Campus. This doesn't actually work in student view, so I'm going to go to instructor view. It, it should work on your student view because you're an official student, but when I am I go to student view, they just make me what they call a test student, so I actually don't, um, it actually won't work to sync my account with Campus as a test student. But for you, when you click MH Campus, you should see, hopefully, um, an image will pop up in a minute. But please use this MH Campus link to access McGraw-Hill Campus Connect, they call it. Unfortunately, all these words, Campus Connect and, and Canvas, all start with C. Um, and the image of the actual textbook isn't appearing on my screen and probably not on yours either, but we're using the Focus on Personal Finance 5th Edition, and if you click this Connect button, it should take you to McGraw-Hill's Connect website. I've already clicked it and have it open, and, and I'm in Student View for Connect as well, so yours should look fairly similar to this once you register and um, select the Finance 215 class in McGraw-Hill's Connect. So, Basically, I've got an assignment, two assignments essentially for each chapter. One is the Learn Smart and the other is the homework. The Learn Smart will help you learn concepts and it'll give you little practice problems that relate mostly to concepts. The homework is for the most part um, quantitative and it'll help you in working problems. Your tests will be both uh, conceptual and quantitative in nature, so you need both of those aspects to do well on the test and just to learn the material because personal finance isn't all about numbers. There are a lot of ideas like should you, is it better if you have let's say enough cash to buy a house, 
Is it better to just pay cash for a house or is it better to take out a loan to buy the house and use the cash that you've got to invest in the stock market? Well, the answer is it depends. And it depends on what tax rates are, how much you think you could earn on your investments, how, how high the rate on the loan is, and things like that. All of your Learn Smarts, which have this LS icon beside them, are untimed. Uh, you can proceed at your own pace. Generally, the Learn Sharks Smarts should take about an hour to get through. Um, the homeworks are also untimed. You have three chances to correctly answer each question before you can't attempt a question anymore. And most students really don't have trouble getting to the correct answer after three tries. The exams, however, are timed. And you have, um, you know, I believe it's 150 minutes. I would have to double check that for each exam. Once you start an exam, I mean, make, let's say the exam ends at 8 p.m. on October the 27th, make sure you start it at least 150 minutes before 8 o'clock. So that, because what will happen is at 8 o'clock, the exam will close. So if you started at 5 minutes until 8, it doesn't give you 150 minutes from the time you start if you start it too close to 8 o'clock. All of the homeworks are currently open, so you can do any of the homeworks. I mean, if you, if you wanted to finish the course in the first two weeks in terms of homeworks, you can. But the exams won't open until certain times. For instance, the first exam won't open until October the 24th. So even if you're ready to take it on the 19th, it's not going to open until the 24th. It'll stay available until the 27th of October, at which point it will close at 8 o'clock. But again, you still just get 150 minutes from the time you start unless you start too close to 8 o'clock. I'm just trying to remember, I remember if there's anything else I have uh, to say about this. I haven't written all of the exams. This is a new edition of the textbook, so I have to go through and redo everything. So I've only got exam one ready, but well in advance of, of um, the time it is to take exam two, I'll, I'll have it ready. I have all the homeworks and long learn smarts ready, and I'll probably have the exams at, by the end of next week, the second and third exam. The exams are not cumulative either, so um, you don't have to worry about that. The, your scores, you'll, you, there's a grade book in Connect, but I don't use that. What I do is export everything to Canvas and do all my calculations in Canvas. I have a little more flexibility with the way grades are calculated in Canvas, so I prefer to use Canvas's gradebook. So what I will do is convert each Learn Smart and homework to a percentage correct and import that into Canvas. And I want to just take a look at a, a Learn Smart. My internet has been slow all day, so <laughs> hopefully it won't be too bad. Again, this is a way for you to just test whether you understand the concepts in the chapters. So uh, I had chosen the chapter one assignment, so it's it's going to ask me some some questions about chapter one material, and based on my responses, it's going to either prompt me with another question from the same topic area, or if it's if it has learned that I know all the things from this topical area, it'll ask me a question from a new area. Or if I've not been performing well on the practice questions, it'll prompt me to study a particular topic. So I'm actually going to read this question. So what are some of the methods that cannot be used to compute time value of money? Well, measuring tape and ruler and banker's books are the answers because I can use the other three to compute time value of money, and I am absolutely certain I know the answer, so I'm going to say I know it. And I was right. So it says, okay, she understands that fairly well. Now if you disagree with an answer that the 
software has said is correct, you can challenge a question. So examples of opportunity costs do not include, you know, I'm not even going to read this question or the answers, and I'm going to say I have no idea. So it's going to get some feedback from me and make a decision about what to what to do. And again, I'm not even reading this question, and I'm just saying I have no idea. I want some, a certain thing to pop up. Um, again, I'm, I'm just doing silly things at the moment because I'm trying to get something to pop up. Oh, um... It, it sometimes takes a while to get a certain thing to pop up. Well, you know, eventually, if I do enough things wrong, it's going to pop up a little thing and prompt me to uh, click a button to go to a certain topic in the book and read it. I, I'm... I don't want to spend any more time trying to get that to pop up. As you, oh, I don't know if you noticed, but right down at the bottom, before I clicked what I just clicked on, it said 50 items left. Um, what I can do is look at chapter one and see how many questions that I've gotten correct uh, versus attempted. And now I wasn't actually trying to get those correct. And this tells me my proportion correct. And oh, I, I'm looking for it. I don't see it right off the top of my on, on my screen instantly. You know, I'm gonna have to find it. But as you progress through a chapter. Oh, here it is. Uh, it tells you the percentage that you've completed of that chapter. And this is how your grade will be determined on your Learn Smarts. It won't be determined based on the percentage of the questions that you got right on those practice problems. It will be determined on this completion status. This is a percentage, so obviously the highest you can get is 100%. So you've got 14 chapters. I want you to read and study and do those Learn Smarts for each 14 chapters. And your goal, I suppose, is to try to get 100% on each of those. And this tells you how many items you have left and how many minutes they project it to take. For your homework, I'm going to go ahead and access a homework just to show it to you. Maybe you've never done um, online homeworks before. Most of you probably have. Though. So this tells me the due date and how many attempts I have left. So the rule of 72 basically just says if you take your interest rate and you divide it into 72, it'll tell you how long it takes a value to double. So if I take 72 divided by 8, um, that tells me the number of years it takes for something to double. So what is <laughs> 72 divided by 8? 9? And then if I t earn 5% on my investments, how long will it take for my money to double? And you can see this, this problem has multiple parts. They don't all have multiple parts. This particular one does. There's a place for hints. There should also be... Um, a link that says ask my instructor. Now I can't find it. It's it's not here under help. I think because I'm in student view and I'm not officially a student, it, it's not activating the ask my instructor link. But you should have one. I've activated it from uh, my ch choice of options that I have for the course. And so I know it should be appearing. If it's not appearing, let me know. I, I think it might appear down here, but again, I can't see it because I'm not really a student. Oh, but anyway, so let me... I just, I don't know what 72 divided by 5 is. And the reason, again, I was doing 72 divided by 5 is because the rule of 72, which you would learn after you read the chapter, is if you take 72 divided by your rate, it tells you how long it takes your money to double. And so the calculator says 14.4 years. It does want me to round my answer to one decimal place. 
And you know, I'm going to go 14.3, even though the calculator said 14.4, because I want to hopefully show you something. And then if my rate is 2.5%, how long will it take to double? So that's going to be 72 divided by 2.5, so 28.8. And I'm going to click check my work. Oh, and it I thought it was going to give me a rounding error on the 14.3, um, but it did not, so we're good. So I'm just going to submit that one. Oops, I don't want to submit it. I would actually uh, just go to the next question and it should save these answers. Or if I want to stop, take a break, I can save and exit. But when I'm ready to finally turn it in, I want to hit submit. Now, if you don't if you don't finish it before the due date, or if you start it and don't finish it before the due date, it will submit it as is on the due date. Okay. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and exit. Oh, I, I can't. I think I'm just gonna hit back. I'm not sure there's much else to show you. So even though you'll be doing the bulk of your work on Connect, again, your grades will be uh, exported to Canvas periodically throughout the quarter. What I usually do is, after everybody's taken the first exam, I, I sync Canvas and Connect and pop all your uh, grades that you've already done over to Canvas. And I do that after every exam. So for a while, you won't have any grades on Canvas, but you will on Connect. All right, if you have questions, uh, send me an email.